Video 6 of the Master Course Quantum Chemistry of Molecular Electromagnetic Properties. The topic of this short lecture is the force due to electromagnetic fields. Let us consider the case that we have an electric field which varies in space and with time and also a magnetic field which varies in space and time. Where what I call here a magnetic field in reality is the magnetic induction or the magnetic flux density. The force F, which has two fields, will exert on a particle with a charge Q, a mass M, which moves with a velocity V, is called the Lorentz force, and I have written it up here. And one can clearly see that um, the electric field of course, interacts with the charge, so the force is actually just the, uh, the electric field times the charge. Whereas in the case of the magnetic field, uh, we will only have a force acting on this charge if the charge is moving. Because if the velocity is zero, then of course this cross product is also zero. Now in many cases and in many equations, one rather works with potentials instead of with the fields directly. And there are two potentials, the scalar potential phi and the vector potential A. Uh, and they are indirectly defined from the electric field and the magnetic field. Because as you can see, this equation is not an equation for the two potentials in terms of the fields, but it's actually how one can get the fields from the potentials. The second thing which you should note, of course, is as soon as we have a vector potential which is time dependent, then the electric and the magnetic phenomena are coupled because you get the magnetic uh, field as the curl of the vector potential, whereas you get a contribution to the electric field from the time derivative of this vector potential. Now, inserting uh, the uh, potentials now into the expression for the Lorentz force, one can rewrite the Lorentz force in this way, where we here have uh, the gradient of the um, uh, scalar potential and the time derivative of the vector potential, and here we have the curl of the vector potential. But how does uh, the scalar and the vector potential look like? Now, let's the electric and the magnetic field here are defined as derivatives either of uh, spatial derivatives, meaning derivative with the three spatial coordinates, or a time derivative. Um, the definitions are not unique. Consider in the following the very simple case that we have a static and homogeneous electric field and magnetic induction B. Then one possible solution for the uh, equations relating the uh, potential to the fields is the following, that the scalar potential is just uh, uh, minus uh, the position vector at which we are interested to evaluate it times this homogeneous and therefore constant uh, and, and static electric field, whereas the vector potential is uh, a cross product of the uh, constant magnetic field and the position vector. Now, and so we can change the vector potential or the scalar potential and uh, get a new one, uh, scalar and uh, vector potential, by adding here for the vector potential the um, gradient of a function, which is a function of space and time, and here to the um, scalar potential, subtract the time derivative of the same function. And... Um, if this is a well-behaved function, uh, a scalar function, an arbitrary scalar function, which we actually call the gauge function, then of course the potentials, the vector potential and the scalar potential will change, but the fields will not be changed. Which means that this def definition or this expression for the uh, potential is as good as uh, the one without adding these uh, uh, contributions from, from the scalar gauge function. Uh, and these uh, uh, transformations are called gauge transformations. Uh, and we will come back to that in particular in the case of 
uh, magnetic properties in later chapters because um, these leads to some problems which um, we have to take care of in our derivation of quantum mechanical expressions for magnetic properties.